Happy New Year! Hello and welcome to the first video of 2023. Already this video is not off to the best start, I'm going to be honest. I set up, did my little test shot and the sound stopped working on my computer. Like fully stopped headphones, any like USB sound equipment, nothing would work. Ran to the nearest computer shop. The very nice man fixed it. Turns out my computer had just uninstalled all sound software for fun. Um, but now it's back. So thank you to the nice man at the computer shop. And a special thank you for not charging me full price. I won't tell your boss. Cheers. So today is my December wrap up. Um, I'm hoping that we can just bish bash bosh through these pretty quickly. Because um, a lot of them. And I read a lot of books in December. Not that many amazing books. Lots of like pretty good books, but not that many amazing books. It was a a generally mediocre month. I think only one five star read the whole month. Um, but yes, lots of books, mostly fine. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, let's get to the books. First off, I finished the Bridgerton series with On the Way to the Wedding by Julia Quinn. This is Gregory's romance that was uh i mean she's done eight of these by now i could you, there was a sense that she was kind of running out of ideas um it was fine it was fairly forgettable um not my favorite british book but not my least favorite british book um the romance was suitably sweet and bland um and i'm gonna save i'm gonna do a video ranking all the british books at some point so I will tell you more about it then. Um, but yes, overall it was a disappointing end to the series. Um, but yeah, it was an okay Bridgerton book. But then, but then I finished the audiobook for Fable by R.F. Kuang. I've already spoken about this in my best books of 2022. So you know I loved it. And this is definitely the best book I read in 2022. It might be one of the best books I've read in all time. It was amazing, absolutely incredible. Obviously, everyone is obsessed with this book, has been talking about it all year, um, and for good reason. It's fantasy in a more kind of, not quite magical realism, but leaning that way. Um, it's historical, it's speculative, it's commentary on la how language is used in colonialism all sorts going on here um, and it follows Robin who he was born and grew up in Canton in China and was taken to England to study Chinese and similar languages and to use that to for the British Empire's gain um, and over the course of the book he realises quite what is being asked of him and quite what the effects of that will be um, and he decides to do something about it. It's a truly, truly brilliant book. Um, I've, I feel like I've already spoken about it in my last video and I've written a review of it and everyone else is speaking about it. So what I will say, the audiobook's amazing and go read it. Then, oh, I just knocked my tripod. <laughs> Then my final Tudor book of the year. So last year I set myself a challenge to read at least one book about the Tudors off my TBR every month. I've not set myself the same challenge this year. I wanted to mix it up a bit. Maybe I'll come back to it in a future year. Um, but I read My Heart Is My Own by John Guy, which is a biography of Mary Queen of Scots. And it is a chonky, chonky non-fiction book. That's another reason I'm not doing this challenge two adjacent years, because most books about the Tudors are long. <laughs> it was very interesting, clearly very well researched. Um, the On the front it says, a biography that reads as thrillingly as a detective story. I wouldn't go that far. It was still relatively dense nonfiction. Um, but she did have a wildlife, you know? Like, it was still a lot of, like, what? She did this? She did that? What? Um, the thing that I know the most about Mary Queen of Scots, which I think is the thing most English people know the most, is of course about the treason plot with Elizabeth I, 
that was very much kind of it was sort of brushed over it wasn't really actually in this very much which on one level I'm like it was nice to learn other things on another level that's, that's what I was kind of really here for um so yeah it was enjoyable uh it was a good biography um even though it didn't sort of like blow me away I feel like this is a difficult book to kind of be an annual standout you know but nonetheless a good read then I read Deacon Blues by Carl Troutman this is a kind of literary historical coming of age story set in the 70s late 70s early 80s I believe and is about a young man he starts off as a teenage boy he is sort of in his late teens early 20s by the end of the story um called Manny Manfred and he is obsessed with Jimmy Carter like many young people he is very passionate about what he believes in and he does everything he can to make it happen to the point that you kind of want to sort of sit him down and be like dude chill it's okay I really liked the setting it was set in parts of America I've spent time in so that was really really nice um and yeah it was a very compelling very compelling main character very compelling story um I would have liked a little bit more kind of um setting up of some of the storylines but on the whole very much enjoyed it my non-fiction read for this month was Exposure by Olivia Sudjik. This is basically an essay about anxiety and social media and misogyny on social media and sort of how being a writer contributes to all of that. So there's lots of very interesting ideas in here. It felt more like it felt like when you sat in a coffee shop with one of your best friends and you just sat for hours talking through all of these ideas that you have about the world around us and you're going yeah you're absolutely right and then you're like and another thing here's why i hate twitter you know like you get into that deep conversation with a friend that's what it felt like which was both a good thing and a bad thing i think um a good thing in that it was very readable it felt very um so sort of, it did feel like having a conversation with a friend um i don't know if it's the right tone for an essay published as a book if that makes sense um there was no kind of big conclusion there wasn't really anything said that i felt was new there was nothing kind of that made me go you know what you are right there was nothing that was sort of linked together in a new way and that was what was sort of missing from this um, but lots of really good points nonetheless and then I finished the audiobook to A Lady's Guide to Fortune Hunting by Sophie Irwin which was narrated by Eleanor Tomlinson I believe her name is from Poldark, Angus Songs and Perfect Snogging etc. I had a great time with this it was a fun Regency romance about a young woman Kitty she is the oldest of five daughters and her parents have both died leaving them in a ton of debt so she goes out for the the only way for a young woman to get a load of money in Regency era very quickly is to find a rich husband so off she goes and she manages to blackmail a duke into helping her um and yes just general hilarity all around it was good fun like I said um and one of the things that did stand out to me for this is I think because of the I like the ideas of her financial situation and the love interest he has just come from the Battle of Waterloo and is reeling from that dealing with a lot of trauma it did feel a little bit more rooted than some other Regency romances that may have been mentioned in this video um, without losing that kind of light-heartedness that comes with the genre so it was really good fun and brilliant narration as I fully expected. Then we had my least favourite book of the month and I feel a bit vindicated because I saw a lot of people on Twitter being like what is the big deal about this book like I don't get it uh, and it is The Atlas Six by Olivier Blake. Olivier? Olivia? Olivier? I'm very sorry I don't know how to pronounce it. Although it is a pseudonym, so I feel less bad about not being able to pronounce it. <laughs> so the idea is that there are six people who join 
the Atlas Society to save the library. There's the Library of Alexandria was involved. Only five of them survive and get the job. Um, they're all kind of awful and all fancy each other. Um, and then at the end, the, the last few chapters were the best bit. I really liked the last few chapters. Um, the rest of it, honestly, I was pretty bored. It was very repetitive and dull. Um, I honestly finished it. I wasn't going to finish it. I, was, I considered DNFing it many times. But I didn't just because it, it was my pick for buzzword reading challenge. And I didn't want to start another book for it. So I finished this one. Um, so yeah, I was not a fan. It just, it just didn't do it for me. Then I read Layla and the Moonline by Lisa Persky. This is a YA fantasy about a young woman who lives in the trees as part of the Treadle people. Um, it took me a while to get into this one. It did take me a few chapters to get into it. But once I kind of adjusted to it, because it had a very... The writing style reminded me of almost sort of Noel Stratfield, C.S. Lewis, that kind of mid-century children's authors was the kind of writing style. Um, so it did take me a while to settle into it. But once I did, I really, really enjoyed it. The main character, obviously, Layla. She... Uh, lives in a very gendered society where there are very strong expectations placed on people, especially young women. And she goes off to see the world and to find her fortune. Um, fortune being her, like, success and herself, you know, rather than she doesn't find the streets of paves of gold or anything. Um, yeah, it was really lovely, really lovely story. Very, again, very compelling character. Um... And I'm, I'm intrigued as to what the author writes next because it was a very unusual read from what I usually expect for YA fantasy. Then I read Goods and Effects by Al Schnupp. This follows the main character, Hannah, who after the death of her husband and sons, she buys a truck, a van, drives around um, and has her, her business there. And it's about the sort of interaction she has with the people in her community. It's sort of told through little vignettes, little sort of snapshots of people's lives. Um, I personally found it a little bit too detached for me. I know some people really like that. For me, it just was was a little bit sort of too kind of detached from the characters. I kind of struggled to connect with them until until the very end. What I did really appreciate though is I think this is an example of how diversity can be really, really well written. Um, and especially for adult books and for literary fiction they're often writing diversely is seen as something to kind of shy away from because it's something for something for YA books only which is a whole other video discussion in itself but mostly me going no but I thought this did it really really well and sort of demonstrated the strength of writing like that um so yeah that was goods and effects then I read a short story. It's so short, I read it at a service station on Christmas Eve, and that is In Search of Beira's Hammer by Christina Young. This follows a main character, Scarlett, who is from Berlin, and she would like there to be hills and mountains outside Berlin for her to hike across. So she travels to Scotland in search of the legendary Beira, whose hammer sculpted the Scottish Highlands, um, and she enlists along the way various figures and creatures from Scottish folklore to help her find this hammer. It was really fun, really light-hearted, had a really good sense of humour. Um, I would have liked it to be a bit longer, I just sort of felt like some of the plot points and chapters just needed a little bit, a little bit more breathing room, but a really, really fun short story. Um, I said it again, it's really fun, but it was! Um, and it had a real heart to it and a love of folklore and of the outdoors you know I was reading it and I just wanted to go hiking across the mountains so that's a win for me. Next up is One Night in Hartswood by Emma Denny. This is a historical romance between two men in the 14th century. Uh, it's the mid 1300s and uh, a young man William is betrothed to a young woman and he does not want to marry her, he does not know her name, he does not know anything about her but he does not want to marry her. And her brother, Raph, uh, is 
exploring the woods one day and bumps into a handsome young man called Penn and sparks begin to fly. Um, but Penn is the nickname of William, who is betrothed to Raph's sister. Um, Q, misunderstanding of identity, or the works. It was, it was kind of what it said on the chin and I had a good time. Some of it was surprisingly dark. It had lots of different kind of tones and storylines to it. Um, and I did say in my review, which I'll link in the description, that the ending was kind of contrived, but also that that's almost necessary when you're writing queer historical romance, because happy endings are going to look different <laughs> uh, than they do for a straight couple. So, you know. That is a topic worthy of deeper discussion, I feel. It was really nice to read a mainstream queer romance written by a queer author. Um, I think that's something we will hopefully see more of soon. And the very last book that I read in 2022 was kind of a letdown. It was The Awakening by Lucy A. McLaren. And this one, I just really struggled. I just, I had to sort of drag myself through it. Um, again, I probably would have DNF'd it, except I had to finish it for a thing. Um, it's all the description, what I read it for. And yeah, I kind of, I just really struggled with this one. I don't know what it was. I just couldn't connect with the stories, with the, with the story, with the characters. I just had this kind of bit of a mental block with it. It's a fantasy in a kind of Dark Ages setting where some people have magic powers and those people are kind of taken in to be trained for like the sort of empire people um and it follows a group of people who are trying to escape that so yeah there were lots of really good things some some very compelling characters and relationships between them but on the whole i just really struggled to connect with it unfortunately and that's it my last wrap-up of 2022 and my first video of 2023. Let me know what you read in December and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. Ta-ra for now.